Hey guys, welcome back to our hands-on machine learning book series. Now, as we progress in our learning journey, today we are going to see how to implement this machine learning project. Now, in the last video, we have seen how to download the data set from the GitHub repository and then we have created the initial visualization for the given data. Now, let's see and let's discover some of the insights that are present in the data. You now, in order to do that, we started with creation of visualization. Now, this is a basic scatter plot that I'm creating for the column of latitude and longitude and dips helps me in identifying as where is that exact house data is present. So this is a basic scatter plot. And once that is done, to understand about the uh, number of houses or to understand about what is the hub spot or a hot spot over there, we have made use of transparency, which is a parameter that is called as alpha and I have set it equal to 0.1. Now by specifying the alpha, I can now observe where and all we have any overlap of data points are present and I can observe that these are the areas which I see high volume of points or the overlap of points that I could observe in this given data set. Now as I progress here, I'm improving the visualization that I'm creating over here. So for the size, I'm specifying the column value for population. And for the color, I'm specifying as choose from the column of median house value. Which means when you observe this plot right now, whichever the sizes that you see in a bigger size, whichever the circle that you see in the bigger size, it means the population is high compared to the ones which are in very small uh, circle ones or the small marker ones. And for the color coding, I'm doing the color coding with the help of this median house value, which means wherever the house, fa house value with that you see in red color, it means it is a costlier one, which is close to 500,000. And if it is in blue range, it means it's a, it's not so costlier one. Okay. And here I'm just getting the down, I'm just downloading the image of the California map so that we can get a good visualization of the area that we are dealing with. So this is going to download the data from the GitHub repository. And once that is done, we are creating the visualization. Now as an overall, what we are actually doing is we are downloading the data and we are trying to see what the data is conveying us. Now this is how the California map would look like and whichever the one which are nearest to see. So those are the ones which are very costly one compared to the others. At least that's what we could observe from this given map data. Okay, that's good. Next, as we proceed along, we are going to see whether we have any correlations that are present in the data. Correlations is nothing but understanding as how one variable affects another variable. So how the change in one variable is going to affect the change of another variable. Let's assume I have two variables that I have. One is height and the another one is weight. Now, if there is an increase in one variable is going to increase in another variable. If height increases, weight also increases. So if weight also increases, then I'm assuming that the height is also being increased. So in such scenarios, I can say that there is a positive correlation. It is important for us to understand about this correlation because this is the one which is going to help us in determining whether the variable that we have chosen is an important one or not. If I'm using the basic logistic regression or any other models. So in order to find the correlation for my given data, I'm calling this CORR method. So housing.corr. So this is going to generate me the correlation values. Now I'm selecting a single column of median house value because that is the uh, column that I'm really interested in, which I want to predict. So if I display my correlation values, so it says, median house income is having a high correlation compared to other variables for the column of median house value. So it, it's obvious, isn't it? So if I have more income, then I'll prefer to buy a house, which is a, which is of higher value. And that is what my data is conveying. And apart from that, we have other variables and I do not see much of the correlation or whether it's a negative or whether it could be positive. I don't see much of the correlation between other variables. So I can say that income is the deciding factor for the median house value. Okay. 
Now here I'm creating a pair plot. Now in this scenario, I'm just creating a scatter plot with reference to every numerical value that we have in our data set. And as we have clearly seen for the median income and the median house value, we have observed about the positive correlation, which is closer to 0.7. So this is the median income and this is the median house value. And we can clearly observe there is a positive correlation between them. Okay. Next. So this is just a single plot where medium income, medium income versus house value scatter plot. Okay. Now let's explore the other parameters as well. So this is a typical flow that we would follow. So we'll download the data. We'll analyze our variables, whether it is affecting my target variable or not. If yes. Okay. Can I generate any new variables from the existing data? Those are the ways that we'll be thinking about when we are processing the information. Then here I'm experimenting with the attribute combinations. So from the given data, I'm generating new information. So I'm having two columns that's called as total rooms and total households. So I'm dividing one below. I'm dividing total rooms by total households to get a new value, which is called as rooms per household. In the same way, we have the information in the data set about total bedrooms and the total rooms. I'm dividing total bedrooms by total rooms to display as to get the value of bedrooms per room. And we have the information of population and households. So I'm dividing population per by household to get the information about population per household. So this activity where I'm using my existing data to generate a new data. So this activity is actually called as feature engineering. Okay, I'm going, I have done this feature engineering and once this is complete here, I'm again trying to find the correlation between the values, whether I can get any new information over here. So I can see that there are no much positive impact over here. So if I simply create a scatter plot for rooms per household with the median house value, this is how it would look like. Okay. Now, once that is done, we are going to prepare the data for our machine learning models. Now, before we prepare the data, we have to first clean the data. Now, when I say cleaning, we'll have to see whether we have any missing entries that we have in our data frame. Because normally when we get the data from the external server or an external system, there can be issues with the data formatting. And in some scenarios, some rows will have the missing entries. And if I use those entries right, just like that, I'm going to end up with an error in my machine learning model. And sometimes the prediction that I'm going to generate on such machine learning model with the missing data will not be an impactful one. Hence, it's very important that we clean the data before we send the data to my machine learning model. And in order to do the same, we are just creating a copy of the data that we already have. And then I'm separating my input and the target variables. So this is important because when I'm calling my machine learning algorithms, if it is a supervised machine learning algorithms, the machine learning algorithm expects my data and the target should be separate. And because of that reason, I'm creating two variables. One is called housing. Another one is called as housing labels. The housing will contain my input data and the uh, housing labels contains my target data. So input and the output. Now, once I've done that activity here, we are actually taking care of uh, cleaning the data. I'm checking whether we have any null entries in our data frame. So to check my null entries, I'm making use of pandas is null method. And I'm checking if it has at least a single value in that specific column please return it. So this is going to return me uh, whether it has a single. So this is going to check whether we have any missing values in each row. If yes, it's going to return that particular row. Okay. Now, once that is done, I'm displaying some example data sets that we have. So these are the data which has the missing entries. So I can clearly see that some rows has missing information about total bedrooms. Okay. Now, wherever we have the missing values, we have to fill those missing values or at least drop those missing values. 
Now, if I want to drop the missing values, then I can make use of a function that's called as drop in here, which is present inside my pandas library. And I can just remove it. So here I mentioned as I want to drop in here for the column of bedroom. So wherever I'm having the bedroom missing, I want to remove that particular row. So I have done that. It says, okay, so this has been removed or the other option is uh, I can make use of this drop function and I can remove that entire column itself. So that is another option. So I can remove my entire column itself. That is the uh, total bedrooms or the third option is I can fill the missing values with the median value. So here in this example, I'm taking the third approach. That means I'm filling the missing values with the median value. Now, apart from this, we also have one more method. So the other method is we can make use of sklearns simple imputer. I can impute it by specifying the strategy as median. And here, um, I can make use of this as well and I can fill it up with median values. Now in this example, so since I'm using the strategy of uh, filling every missing value with the median value. Now before I do that, I'm dropping the categorical variable. There's a categorical variable that's called as ocean proximity. So I'm removing that and then I'm performing the fit using my simple imputer that I have initialized earlier. And then once that is done, I can go ahead and fill those values. Okay. So here, once, once I fill those values, okay, if I calculate the statistics, so these are the imputer statistics that we have. Okay. So that is what we could find over here. Now, once that is done here, we are transforming the training data set. So we have performed the fit. When I say fit, it is going to find the median values. When I say transform, it is going to apply those missing values into the, it is going to apply those median values into those missing values. And then I'm creating my data frame. And after I create the data frame, this is how my data frame would look like. That's amazing. Now I have used the imputer strategy as median. And once, I'll just go ahead and complete the pre-processing activity. And once I'm done with the numerical columns, we'll go ahead and handle my categorical variables. Now here, when I'm handling this categorical variables, so we have various options to handle this categorical variables. So here we have a encoder that is called as uh, ordinal encoder. That is what we are using. The reason because I want to have the ordering as well when I'm performing the conversion into the numerical format. And because of that reason, we have made use of this ordinal encoder and we are going to encode this categorical data into a numerical format. And uh, we can go ahead and perform this encoding or if we do not want, we can also perform one hot encoding if I do not want to considering the ordering that is present over there. So this will take care of the transformation for my numerical data and the categorical data. So all in all, we've just walked through this notebook and then we have mentioned that what are the pre-processing activity that we are doing over there at a very high level. The reason that we are going in very high level because we'll be revisiting these topics in depth as we proceed along in our learning journey. So you might have seen that I'm, I'm filling up the missing values with the median values in case of numerical attribute and in case of categorical data, I am performing the category, I am performing the encoding to convert my categorical value into a numerical value. And that is how we perform this data pre-processing. Now, along with that, you also seen an example of feature engineering where I have used my existing features to generate a new feature. So I'll stop the video over here. So just have a quick go through of this notebook. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you. And as we proceed along in this learning journey, so we are going to go in depth and understand the reason behind why we are doing that particular activity. So till then, take care and I'll see you next time. So as we progress along, we'll look into the custom transformers and how it is being used. And we'll see how all these things would work as we proceed along in our learning journey. So see you next time. Take care and if you are new to us, 
please consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you next time.